Hello, welcome back to Buckle Up. My name is Rob Wilson. This is the Kia Nero, and today I'm going to find out if it's the best small family crossover on sale today. Okay, so I want to start as we always do by talking about the front of the car and there's a couple of interesting things to point out. This is Kia's new badge, it's K-I-A, but if you're dyslexic like me, it does look like a K and a backwards N or a right way around N if you're dyslexic like me. Gone is the tiger nose grill. There is no like little bow tie grill that Kias have had. This is just a chrome detail around the top line of the front of the car. It doesn't actually incorporate any of the lights because there, further down here, with your daytime running light going around the edge, it's very distinctive at night. If you've seen one, you will know this is the new Nero. But other than that, not too much else to talk about. There's a couple of safety bits going on, which we'll talk more about when we're driving. But now, let's go and look at the side. Okay, so let's move on to the side where we can see that the Nero is available with 16, 17 and 18 inch alloy wheels. These are the 18s and they're rather magnificent. They look really good, diamond cut, really posh, good, nice, like it. Moving on down the side, it's generally just a standard crossover shape. All models get these black roof rails, but as you can see, just standard crossover until you get to this point where you can option this different colored panel here for the C pillar and integrated into that is actual aero. So air goes in here and it pops out the back here, which helps make it more efficient. Speaking of efficiency, the Nero is available as either a conventional hybrid, a plug-in hybrid, or a full EV. This is the plug-in hybrid model, and you can get it in different spec levels, which are two, three, or four. Now prices start for the standard hybrid at around 27,000, but this one, the plug-in hybrid in the top spec four trim is over 40,000 pounds, which is quite a lot, but you're not gonna be buying car cash because everyone buys cars on finance these days. So yeah, it is quite a lot when you say it like that, but it's not actually that much compared to other plug-in hybrid rivals on the market. Anyway, let's go and look at the back and see what's going on there. Okay, so now you join me at the back of the Nero and look at these tail lights. Wow, look at this old angles. It reminds me slightly of a Volvo actually. And then further down, what would normally just be reflectors, an afterthought on someone else's car. This is an exact replica of the daytime running lights at the front, that shape. So, you know, the thought about this, it's cohesive even at the front and the back. It's great that they've bothered to do stuff like that. Also worth pointing out back here is your seven year warranty sticker, which is something to shout about. It's one of the best warranty packages out there in the business. On that side, you've got your Nero badging and on this side, you've got the powertrain designation. So in this one, it says FEV, which is plug-in hybrid electric vehicle. Anyway, let's open up the boot and see how big it is. So, obviously electric and there we go you can see I'm actually gonna sit in it it's actually quite a good space there are a couple of things to note with the Nero's boot because it's available in three different powertrains essentially there's three different boot sizes so the hybrid has a 450 liter boot because those batteries live under the back seats in the plug-in hybrid, this version, that falls quite considerably to 360 litres because the batteries have to go under the boot floor because there isn't really anywhere else they can go. And then on the electric version, you actually get the biggest boot, which is 475 litres because those batteries are actually built into the floor, so they're out of the way of everything. So yeah, bit of a strange one, three different kinds of boot size. But anyway, Back here, you've got tethering hooks all about the place. Down here, over here, 
round there. But there isn't really too much else to talk about because I can't really show you under the boot floor because it's taken up by battery stuff and charging cables. So I think what we'll do is go round into the back seats and see if I can fit. Okay, so now I'm in the back seats of the Nero and I have to say, I uh, am pleasantly surprised by how much room there is in a small crossover like this. If I sit all the way up straight, I've still got headroom. I'm not, my head isn't touching, which is great. For reference, I'm six foot two or 188 centimeters tall. If I put my knees straight, then they are touching the seat in front. This seat is set up in my driving position, but you don't really ever have to sit like that. You'd more sit with your legs apart. And if you do that, there's absolutely loads of room. My leg isn't brushing up against the door or anything like that. So that is good. I like that a lot. In terms of features back here, because this is a top spec Nero, I have two stage heated seats for the two outer rear seats. There's vents back here for the climate controls so you can get hot or cold even in the back and further down right in the centre there is a 220 volt socket so you can charge something pretty quick actually. There is uh, two USB-C's attached here to the backs of the front seat so you can plug your device in there and sit and watch it here. And if you don't want to use it, you can store it in these aeroplane style seat back pockets, which fold out probably just about the perfect size for an iPad. In terms of storage bits and bobs, you've got an armrest that drops down and you can fit a bottle of water in there, which is good. And the bottle of water also just fits in the rear door pockets as well. You've got Isofix on the two outer seats and actually just generally this is quite pleasant. You've got a decent view ahead. You can look around the headrests which is good. If you've got kids they'll like that. The window line is reasonably low so they'll be able to see out where they're going and also those windows roll all the way down which is good. Materials back here there's a bit of hard plastic on the tops of the doors, but where you're gonna be resting your arm on here or in that armrest in the center, it's nice and squidgy. This is a not leather, it's vegan leather. Um, so it's basically plastic, but it feels really quite nice and premium. It doesn't feel cheap like a lot of fake leathers out there. And because it's vegan, you know that no animals have been harmed, if that's your thing. But that's pretty much it for the back seat so i shall hop in the front and we can see what's going on there right so now we're in the front of the nero and this to me is where it starts to justify its price tag because this is really nice up here all of the materials are absolutely great soft touch on the doors all the way down there soft touch on the top of the dash you've got soft touch it's just yeah everything feels nice premium You've got gloss black. It's, yeah, it, it feels expensive up here, which is good. Speaking of how nice the steering wheel feels, let's talk about what buttons you've got on it. So this side is all of your like cruise control and information data that can be displayed in your driver's display. You have a drive mode button, which you can flick between eco and sport, depending on what you want. And then on this side is your controls for volume, changing the track, answering the phone, etc etc moving across to the center of the cabin you've got this lovely swooping design of the screens big screen in the middle here where you can connect your apple carplay and android auto up it's nice and easy phone just sits down there and wirelessly charges as well you've got a usb a usb c and a 12 volt socket there as well if you want to charge something a bit more meaty now i will talk about the climate controls as well because it's not all in the screen yay woo! we like that so but they're not physical buttons it's not quite perfect uh but it's a damn sight better than a, a lot of this car's rivals so you've got actual dials for twisting the climate controls oh how old-fashioned and brilliant is that and you can flick between, you know, switching the rear screen, everything like that. It's all done by touch screen, but you can switch what that displays to 
your map navigation seek track radio control so there are shortcuts for doing that if you want to do something in the screen while say you've got your phone connected up but most of the time i would just leave it in climate set it to auto fantastic great love that you can do that with actual button pressing further down you've got your gear selector in the middle so you can have uh, reverse neutral or drive and then press the p in the middle for park and that's all controlled on this rotary dial in the center either side of that you've got physical buttons yes for your heated seats cooled seats heated steering wheel and if you want to show the cameras or the parking sensors Put it in EV mode, all of that sort of stuff is controlled down there by physical buttons. Yes, a win. In terms of practicality, it's it's not bad. You've got a bin in the center here, which opens up under the armrest. Then there's an area down here where you can put some cups and the like. I shall demonstrate with a bottle of water and it fits in there. It doesn't rattle around too much. Speaking of the bottle of water, that does again just about fit in the door pockets with a squeeze, but they're not the biggest door pockets in the world. You've got a glove box which you push open there and it's nicely damped. Decent size as well, which is good. But yeah, that's basically the front of the Nero. I really like it up here. It feels quality, it feels premium, and it just it looks really good as well. So what I think I'll do now is take it out on the road, go for a drive, see what it's like, and then I'll come back and do a conclusion for you. Okay, so out on the open road in the new Kia Nero plug-in hybrid, and first impressions are it's very comfortable. Uh, the suspension is very well set up. I'm on some back roads at the minute and the damping is pretty good for a small crossover like this. I think because it's ever so slightly longer wheelbase wise than its rivals it seems to soak up the bumps a bit better. But since I am on a country road I should probably also talk about the handling. Now it's still it's an electric setup so it's not full of feel but it's perfectly adequate it you know where the front wheels are pointing but it's not exactly sporty now i can put it into sport mode but all that really does is change the tiles and it means that the petrol motor is more eager and the electric motor is there to provide extra power rather than for efficiency so i'll probably just stick to having it in eco I think that's what most people are going to be doing most of the time if you are in eco then you're going to be eking out every mile to the gallon that you possibly can and this in its plug-in hybrid iteration is currently averaging 40 miles to the gallon but if you're doing a long run like I did in it yesterday then I average 50 miles to the gallon on the motorway coming back, which is pretty good. That's sort of what you would expect from a diesel. Uh, so obviously, if you are looking to switch from a conventional petrol or diesel car into one of these, then you're not gonna be shortchanged when it comes to miles to the gallon. So in terms of performance, if you go for the hybrid standard spec, then you get 136 PS, whereas in this plug-in hybrid version you get 180 PS, so it's quite a lot more powerful than the standard hybrid. That means that you can go from 0 to 60 in just under 10 seconds and onto a top speed of 100 miles an hour, which isn't that good, but you're not really going to be driving more than the speed limit anyway. If you go for the full EV version, then you get over 200 horsepower and that means you can go from 0 to 60 in just less than eight seconds so that's quite sprightly for small crossover sort of entering into the warm hot hatch market there now i'm just at a junction so i'm going to flick it into sport mode see how much power it actually feels like you're getting when you pull out of a junction this is a real world example of this although this is one of the busiest junctions in the world so he's letting me go thank you put my foot down i 
and that's 60. So yeah, it's not the quickest in the world, but it's not so slow that you can't pull out of a real world junction, which is great. Now the engine, most of the time you can't hear it, you can't even tell it's on, and it's constantly flicking between having the engine on and being in full EV mode depending on what it thinks is best for efficiency. But as you heard there, when even when I was accelerating really hard out of that junction, it wasn't massively intrusive, which is good. And the automatic gearbox works well, it's just a standard six speed, but it's nice and smooth. And importantly, unlike the Volkswagen Group double clutch gearboxes, it's not that bitey when you're like setting off because most of the time if you're just setting off you're going to be in EV mode so it's more gradual and progressive and easier to sort when you're just traveling at one or two miles an hour trying to park. So now we're on a dual carriageway which means I can demonstrate the vehicle's safety systems. You may have heard earlier the little beep to warn me that I'd gone over the white line. Well I can actually switch on the auto steer and I can set my cruise control to follow the car in front as I've just done now and now it will steer for me. Now you do have to keep your hands on the steering wheel in this country so it's not full self-driving but no car is including a Tesla but I can take my hands off the wheel for a small amount of time before it'll tell me that I haven't put my hands on the wheel and you can see it's keeping it in the center of the lane it doesn't bounce you around like some systems do there you go it's telling me I have to put my hands back on the wheel so I do and then that warning goes away but this makes long drives so much easier and less tiring because you're not having to think as much as you would if you were driving it yourself so I've got the cruise control set to 70 miles an hour it's staying in the lane but I'm not having to think a lot about it the car's doing it for me and I can see now we're coming up to a, a horse box so when the car sees that the horse box is there it will start to slow me down and I've got a heads-up display as well on this model so it's telling me what the speed limit is on this road, it's telling me what my cruise control is set up to and it's telling me it can see the car in front and that the auto steer is on. And there you go, it's hooked onto the back of the horse box and so now we're slowing down slightly. It just makes it so much easier, it's great. So in terms of range, because this is the plug-in hybrid model, when I, I've just filled it up actually, and I have a range of just less than 400 miles. Now, at the minute, I don't have any electric charge at all. But if I did, and that was fully charged, Kia claimed that you can do 40 miles on just electricity. So that's pretty good for a plug-in hybrid. It's about, it's probably just above average of what the plug-in hybrids can do on the market at the minute. But that means that if you live in a town or a city or wherever, you've probably got 15 miles of usable EV range to go somewhere and come back without having to charge. And if you live not very far from work and you've got charging facilities there, then you can use it at work and never even have to turn the petrol engine on, which is great. It's got plenty of grip. It's front wheel drive, but even when I'm going around this roundabout now, it's not understeering or losing any traction. Nice and grippy. And then I can put my foot down to join the motorway. And that's the only time you really hear the engine is when you're really putting your foot down. And now I can just set my auto steer and cruise control back to 70 and the car does it all for me. Okay, so that's probably enough driving about now, so I'll pull over and do a conclusion for you. Right, okay then, so what do I make of the new Nero? Well, I've lived with it for a week, I've driven it in lots of different environments and over varying different distances, and it hasn't missed a beat, to be honest with you. It's really impressive. If you're in the market for a small crossover, 
definitely give this a look in and there's so many different options if you want conventional hybrid if you want plug-in hybrid if you want full ev and i haven't driven the full ev jasper has he said that was great this plug-in hybrid has been excellent definitely go and test drive it i think it's absolutely got to be on your shopping list if you're in the market for a car like this anyway that's enough from me so if you've enjoyed the video make sure to go down and give it a like comment down below if you've got something to say let me know what your thoughts are on the nero most importantly though please do subscribe and hit the notification bell so you're notified when we make an upload if you want to support the channel you can do so in one of three ways they are to support us on patreon become a channel member right here on youtube or you can buy some buckle up merch which i am sporting here today for you and if you want to follow us in other fashions you can do so by going down into the description and seeing all of our links to our social media but again thank you very much for watching and i shall see you next time goodbye